Hey everybody, Pete Meyer, Motor Age Magazine. Welcome to another edition of How To. Now the last time we got together, we took a single channel pocket scope called the U-Scope and a high amp clamp, and I showed you how to capture a relative compression waveform with those two tools. Uh, but we introduced a few terms in that last episode that we need to dive into a little bit more deeply, specifically triggers and trigger slopes and reference waveforms. We're going to start off with this edition talking about triggers and trigger slopes. So stay tuned, that's coming up next. All right, so what is a trigger? A trigger is that point at which we tell the scope to start drawing the pattern on the screen. Now in the case of the one that you see beside me here, you can see it's kind of rolling across the screen. That's because there is no trigger set yet for this pattern for this signal. Um, when the scope sees any type of voltage input, therefore it's going to go ahead and start displaying that on the screen and that's what gives it that rolling appearance. But we want to get uh, some kind of a st stabilization to the screen though, we have to add a trigger. And there's really three elements that we want to talk about today. Trigger level, trigger slope, and trigger position. Let's start with trigger level. Now, if you can see it on the screen, this pattern is not quite a, a five volt pattern. So it's running from zero to five volts. If I want to stabilize that with the voltage level for my trigger, I need something that's going to be in that range. Not at zero, not at five, but somewhere in between. How about we use four volts as a starting point? So let me open up the trigger window for this scope. Select trigger, trace one, and we're going to use the voltage scale here to set up a four volt trigger point. And you can see in the background, the, the pattern's already stabilizing because of that. So that's the four volt trigger point now applied. You can see the pattern's uh, already kind of stabilized in the background. We'll take a closer look at that in a minute. But then we also want to talk about the slope because we have to do both of these at the same time. I've set a voltage level of four volts, but do I want that trigger to start as the incoming voltage comes from below and then comes up to that threshold of four volts, or do I want it to start above and come down past that threshold of four volts before it starts displaying on the screen? The first is called a rising slope, and the second is called the declining slope, uh, or descending slope, however you want to phrase that. Um, so let's start here. We, we have it set on the rising slope, so let's just take a look at that, see what it looks like on the screen. And you can see that here right in the center, you'll see these small crosshairs and that's where the scope is uh, set to uh, start tracing the pattern. Um, that's the point on the screen that we have it set for. Uh, and we're going to get to that here in a second, show you how to adjust that. But we've set that voltage at 4.0 volts, that's the trigger level. So as the voltage signal coming in comes up from below and passes that 4.0 point, then the scope starts tracing the pattern. So it's actually starting here, tracing across, and then coming from this side to complete. So see, that's how we have a stable pattern now on the screen. Now I can move it to the other side on the descending slope. Let's see what that would look like. Just pick that descending slope there. And you see it's still stabilized pretty much in the same place. I haven't moved the crosshairs, but you can see that now I'm coming down on the decline. In other words, I had to go up past that point and then the voltage level had to come from above the five volt range and then down past 4.0 in order for me to start tracing the pattern. But again, the pattern starts tracing here, goes to the end of the screen and picks up and meets back here in the center. So that's the trigger level and trigger slope. Now let's take a look at trigger position. Maybe I don't want to start it here in the center of the screen. You know, if I'm looking at a single event like an ignition, a single cylinder ignition event or an injector event, then yeah, Maybe I want it in the center, but if I'm looking at a parade of a signal, maybe I want it to start on the far side and, and, and let it fill the screen that way. So very easy to set that. We're just going to go back into trigger settings. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we're going to check the horizontal positioning. I'm just going to drag that slider over. Not quite all the way to the zero line. And you can see now we're actually starting all the way here on the far left of the screen. Okay, so that's just really basic trigger level. That's the four volt threshold that we picked. And again, for this signal, I could be anywhere from just above zero to five or below five. 
trigger uh, upward or downward slope of the voltage, rising or descending slope, and then trigger position on the screen, all right? Let's take a closer look at that just one more time. Okay, so let's take another look at uh, what we've learned today on triggers. Uh, again, the trigger is the point where we telescope to start drawing a pattern. In this case, there is no trigger set. So that's why you see the pattern's just rolling. As soon as there's an input to the scope, it's gonna, it's gonna track it on the screen. So there's no pattern set here. So as it, as it rolls across the screen, uh, we might see something, we might not, but I, I want it more stable. What I need to make it more stable, I need a trigger point on it. And we're gonna go in and, and set the trigger first by uh, setting it for the channel that we want. Now, this is a nice feature. If you're using more than one channel at a time, you can decide which channel is actually gonna be the trigger point. Um, that can also come into play when we talk more about the reference pattern that we add. Um, again, we have it set up on a manual trigger. It's on the rising slope. Um, what does that mean? It means that as you can see here in the far corner, the voltage has to come from below to that threshold that we set. In this case, uh, it's a very small amount, three quarter of a volt, um, and that's where it's gonna start drawing the pattern. Um, the declining slope, you can see that if we have that in place and I pick the declining slope or descending slope, now it's moved that pattern over and uh, you can see that it now has to come from above that threshold amount, whatever it was that we set, and then pass below it in order for the pattern to start tracing. And then positioning, of course, you can see here the little crosshairs, we can adjust where we position the scope pattern uh, or that trigger point, whether we want it in the center of the screen or we want it to, to the left, right, wherever we want it, we can apply that as well. And then you can open it up and we can see what that looks like now that it's stabilized with the trigger. Now, many scopes have advanced trigger functions that allow you to capture glitches in the signal, uh, set it up on a single capture, uh, other, other different options that it might be available to you for the scope that you own. Get comfortable with the basics first and then start exploring those advanced features. Uh, the next time we get together on how to, we're gonna go back to the relative compression waveform. We're gonna set a single use trigger and we're also gonna add a reference so we know which cylinder is the one that's at fault. That's coming up next time here on how to. I'll see you then. Thank <laughs> you.